Hello everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and in today's After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating long shadows using the repeater. It's a really simple process and creates these wonderful, elegant, and very trendy long shadows, and you can use it on more things than just text, but I mean, since this intro needs to tell you what's going on in the tutorial, I guess might as well use text. Anyway, we're going to move into the tutorial and see what we can do. So here in After Effects, the first thing I'm going to do is make a new composition. Now, none of the settings of this composition really matter, so, you know, just type in whatever you feel like. I'm using the HD TV 1080 29.97 preset, and look at the frame size here is 1920 by 1080. When I start using things like position and copies values, just remember that all of my numbers I'm typing in are relative to the frame size of what I'm doing. And remember that whenever I'm putting in keyframes, it's relative to the frame rate here. So 29.97, meaning every 30 frames or so, we've done about a second. So if I go ahead 30 frames, you know, just go ahead a second. Maybe I should just say seconds instead of frames, but, you know, it's not how my keyboard shortcuts are. Okay, so I've got this 30-second comp here. I'm going to make a new solid and that solid is going to be the background. You can make one or not, I don't care. Um, and now I need to create an object that I'm going to have a long shadow come off of. Uh, in the example, I use text. So I just go ahead, go new text, and then uh, blah, 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 put out whatever you want, and uh, then we have something to work with. So I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna center it here, and then I'm going to right click and I'm gonna create shapes from text. So it's gonna convert these vector words into the vector lines of their shapes. And you can see in here that in the contents of this layer, it's created groups A through F, and each of those groups has, you know, whatever many paths are in there, a fill and a stroke and a transform and all sorts of good stuff. This is going to be the top layer. So go ahead and click on it, and we're gonna rename it top layer, layer, there we go. And this will serve as the top, and it doesn't really cast shadows. So first thing I want to do with this is to duplicate it. And I do that by hitting Control-D or Command-D. I'm going to rename this one Shadows. And I rename things by just selecting it and hitting the Return button. That gets it done. So I put the shadows below the top layer, obviously. And then I'm going to add to this a repeater. All right. So now you can see here in the order of things, we have A through F groups, and then a repeater that happens after those groups. Now, let's look into the repeater here and see we have copies, we have offset, and then we have the transform here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put the number of copies up to 100. So as you can see, it's creating a whole bunch of copies. Great. Now I'm gonna change the position from 100, 0 to 1, 1. And that means that each new copy is going to be one pixel over and one pixel down from the last one, meaning a complete row. And when we zoom in here, you can see this nice, you know, solid edge coming in here. Even if you increase to something like 2-2, two, two, it starts to get a little, a little steppy, you know? Or, I mean, just keep jacking this up, 3-3, three, three, you know, and so on. So what we want to do is make sure that this is as tolerable as we can stand really so that we avoid sort of like uh, this kind of peakiness that happens here with this A. We really do want that crisp line so that's why I usually leave it at 1-1 uh, one, one kind of thing. So that, that works out perfectly fine for me. And now the next thing I want to do is take this and give it a new color. All right, so usually shadows are darker, but because of the method we're using, it can be uh, any color that we really want. It can be a wacky, weird color. This is not a realistic lighting situation. Uh, we are just pretending that somehow this is projecting shadows like it goes straight back, and then we've got some shadows that come off of it. So, you know, if this D here was a 3D shape, then this wall here would be casting into the middle, and so on. So, that's just, it's, it's a fake shadow, and it's purposefully fake and weird. So, to elongate the shadow, all we need to do is set the number of copies here. So, if we keyframe from zero, and I started keyframing by clicking the stopwatch, and then, you know, we go ahead... You know, like I said, I'm going ahead 20 frames or so, and then I'm um, putting this up to 100, so the shadow is growing out. 
like that. So that kind of simulates as if the light source is directly above and then starts to move this way, right? And then what if we want the light source to then sort of move around to another side? Well, I'm gonna set a keyframe here on the copies and I'm gonna set a keyframe here on the position of the repeater transform. And then I'm gonna go ahead, uh, let's 20, 20 frames here. And we're gonna change this to uh, minus one, right? So now the shadow's over there. So the shadow goes from here to over here. And it's going in kind of a line, right? So let me just set a keyframe here on this and we can see that this would be as if the light source is just moving from here and then in a line to over there, right? More just like that. Not too much to write home about. If we want to imbue sort of a curve to this, as if the light source is arcing over, then as it moves further this way, this shadow needs to get longer this way. Meaning we need to go from 100 to like 140 perhaps. So then it's going Let me just uh, block this off and uh, render it so we can see it happen over and over again. So it gets long, like that. Kind of dunk. But you can see at this point we have an unfortunate bounce that happens because these are linear keyframes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these keyframes and I'm going to easy ease them, which you can do by going animation, keyframe assistant, easy ease, or you can right click on them, keyframe assistant, easy ease, or you can just hit F9, probably just hit F9. So now when I look into the graph editor at these things, and uh, don't worry if your graph editor doesn't look like my graph editor, you access the graph editor by hitting this button and then you can change looking at a value graph or a speed graph uh, here by clicking this button. So what we're gonna do is first I'm gonna stretch this handle here just so that it has a bit more of an exciting motion so it comes out fast and then slows. Okay, I'm comfortable with that. And then I'm gonna have this keyframe here go from being an easy ease keyframe to being an auto bezier keyframe. You see how this kind of goes and gets more lumpy? So that's the lumpy look that I'm after. So it means that it's gonna ease and then come out. Now let's look at a value graph of this same kind of thing. See how this is sort of like an eased hump right there? So that's, you know, that's kind of what we're after. You know, it's, uh, you know, in keeping with what we're hoping to see. So now if we look at the position graph, we look at just its values and we look at its speed. Notice how it has this kind of a hump to it, right? So this hump goes boop, like this, nice and parabolic. Well, we want to kind of have the copies graph, its value graph, sort of mimic that speed graph, right? So how would we do that? Well, I mean, we can start tweaking the handles like this, I suppose, but then shit's gonna get really weird, but this is about, you know, it's about even, you know, doesn't need to be perfect kind of thing. Just so long as it's coming up and then gradually coming back down, you get something that looks passively correct. So let's just have a look as I render through here so we can see what it's doing. And it looks very much like a curve, warp, warp. Kind of like that. And you can see that the values kind of curve as well as you uh, observe them. So it's not not a totally linear relationship and that's definitely not what you want. But you do have now shadows that extrude and then you fake as if the light source is changing where it's at, which looks very cool. I mean, if you have a simple logo and you don't want to do too much with it, then just pull this move and uh, you'll maintain a little bit of visual interest with just a couple of layers. Now, one little trick here that uh, I will point out to you, have a look here at the anti-aliasing that's going on. It gets a little bit dicey in there because we have purples mixing in with the top layers, um, I guess fuchsia or something. So in order to make that go away, just give it a uh, stroke value of one up here that is the exact same color as the fill and that'll sort of put a cap on that, kind of makes this top layer pop off a little bit, which is exactly what you're into. So, or maybe you're not, I don't know. I don't know what you like, but uh, I mean, if you're watching for long shadows, then I have to assume where your taste level is at. Anyway, 
Like I was saying before, this doesn't have to be just text. You can use uh, pretty much anything. So let's uh, have a look here. We've got a top layer and some contents in there. We've got all of these wonderful contents. That's cool. Let me just add a uh, rectangle to this. All right, cool, cool rectangle, guys. Um, let's take this rectangle, make it size like this, and then uh, add to this another rectangle. Blah, 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 blah. Put this rectangle up here. Cool. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let me just get to this merge path and this fill. Just don't, you know, you don't have to follow along with what I'm doing. And now I'm going to delete these other things. And the merge paths, we're going to set this to intersect. No, we're going to set it to subtract. Okay, so I've created uh, this square, this 500 square on the outside. And then the second rectangle here can go uh, 400 on the inside. So we've got this as our, as our object. Okay, cool. So uh, let me just take these contents here, uh, all of those things. I'm going to copy them, copy, go into the bottom thing here. Grab its contents, delete them, and then paste. Make sure that goes above the repeater. And uh, uh, sorry, offset this fill here to uh, a new color. I don't care what color, as long as it's a darker color. Okay, cool. So now I've just swapped out the contents, and as you can see, the technique works perfectly fine for the new contents. So if you go making content edits to one thing, make sure you just propagate them to uh, all the other, you know, shadow and top layer things that you need uh, to have going on. But, you know, isn't that uh, fun and rad? Didn't you learn something today? So anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. If you've enjoyed learning this method for creating long shadows, uh, hopefully you have. I mean, if you didn't, then... Uh, Hopefully you have the good sense to go watch something else instead of watching all of this and getting angry, but uh, I totally understand if you're angry anyway. Uh, if you enjoy learning about motion graphics and After Effects, then I would suggest you subscribe to this channel. I try to make new stuff uh, every week. I don't always do it because I'm a busy guy. I don't know you're a busy person too, so you're not going to watch them every week. Unless you are, in which case that's awesome, and I thank you for your support of this channel. Um, if you want to get a look at the project file, I think it's available for download. Uh, just click a link somewhere in the description. It'll take you to that. Uh, also, check out evanabrams.com for a bunch of other stuff you can download, which is cool. If you have questions about this tutorial, leave them in the comments, and I'll try to get back to them whenever I can. And if you just want to chat about After Effects or motion graphics or whatever, then I would highly recommend you get involved on the Facebook page, the Google Plus, and uh, tweet at me sometime. I'm on the Twitter, at E.C. Abrams. Anyway, that's enough uh, shameless plugs for myself, and this Long Shadows tutorial is running a bit long. Thanks again for watching. This has been Evan Abrams. Hopefully you've enjoyed this, and you subscribe to see more, and I'll see you around the internet.